Hi you guys, my name is Sharita. Welcome to my channel. So, so much stuff has been happening and I know I feel like I always start my videos like this, but something is always happening on the internet and I feel like I don't get enough time to wrap my head around the situation and sit down and make a video before people are over it. But I feel like this topic in particular is something that is always happening. So because something that recently happened earlier this week, I really just wanted to talk about it and whatnot. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about respectability politics when it comes to black women specifically. I had a whole other video that I was going to do about respectability politics as a whole, but because of the conversation that's happening right now, I wanted I wanted to talk about respectability politics within um, black women. So if you guys are interested in this video, go ahead and keep watching. Before I get started, make sure you click subscribe for new content whenever I post and also do not forget to click the notification bell so that you are notified every single time that I post a video. So let's get started. And I got this cute little head wrap from I think Walgreens or something like that. If you know me, I do love to shop black. So if you besides Terrence, because Terrence makes my favorite head wraps. But if you guys know other uh, black owned businesses that makes um, scarves or head wraps like this, let me know. And of course, I'm going to be putting makeup on this bare ass face. Okay, so if you guys are not familiar with the comedian Monique. Monique is, um, she's a comedian, she's a black comedian. She was on the Queens of Comedy, whatever. Funny, hilarious, all that. She had posted a video of her talking about how black women should not be wearing bonnets out in public. And if you guys are not aware of what a bonnet is, basically it's like a silk cap that um, majority of black men and women wear when they go to sleep to protect their hair um, from the cotton pillows or or whatever. Um, I do know a lot of you know black people might use scarves or satin pillowcases or whatever but bonnets are usually the staple. So the way that this started and this isn't the first time that Monique has spoken on this. There's been two videos. There's one video that she did where she was in the car with maybe her daughter. And then there was a second one that she just did a couple days ago in her robe without a bra, but we'll get there. So she goes on this tangent about how black women don't respect themselves. Oh no, no, how it started this time was there was a man and he had posted a picture of black women at the airport minding their black business. And it was like, oh my God, I don't, I don't understand how black women can come out of the house like this. It's embarrassing or whatever he said. They're at the airport. They're probably about to get on a plane for a long periodically time. And their hair is probably laid underneath or maybe it's not. But whatever it is, they do not want their hair to be exposed to the nonsense, to the world. Maybe, maybe they just got their hair freshly done. Maybe it's in a wrap. But again, we'll get there. And my whole thing is, number one, why are you taking pictures of these random women and posting them on the internet? And two... Why is it any of your business? Women wearing bonnets, protecting their hair from the environment does not make them less than. It just doesn't. And so again, I'm gonna be talking about both of the videos that Monique had put out, but right now I'm speaking about the video. I'm speaking about the video where she got on her Instagram live to millions of viewers with just a robe and no bra on and was saying, do better, have more pride. I'm sorry, but you are an influencer. You are a famous person. You don't have to step outside to be respected. So if you're going to be talking about 
respecting or having pride? How come you, who like, if you do go to the airport, let's say you go to the airport, are you gonna run into millions of people? No, but you sat on your Instagram live and I don't care if she was in the comfort of her home or a hotel, she is still putting herself out to millions of people. That part really irritated me because I'm thinking to myself, how are you gonna, like, it just doesn't make sense. How are you going to tell somebody to be presentable when you go out? Like, so the every time I step outside, even if I'm going to check my mail, I need to be in tip top shape. Is that what you're saying? If I wanna run to the store, because I've got a crying baby at home and I just need to get some formula or diapers real quick. I need to make sure that I'm in tip top shape for who? It makes absolutely no sense. So anyway, the way that I look at it, and I know a lot of people are gonna be like, why do you have to bring race into it? Well, because I do. Monique was talking about how you know, when she was a little girl, her dad used to always say things like, before you go outside, make sure you look your best Make sure, you know, you make sure you look good because, you know, if you have, if you're a prideful person or whatever, or if you, you know, like if you have pride, you'll look good, which again, looking good is subjective. She used something where she was like, my dad always said, you know, if I wear nail polish, either it's on or it's off. Like I could never have chipped nail polish. What do you mean you can never have chipped nail polish? Like it happens and people who judge people based off of that that says more about them than it does about you but again i digress and to me especially back in the day i feel like black people and people of color felt like they had to look their best for white people because black people and people of color were already looked down upon and so they had to look their best at all times but here's the thing, even when black people looked their best, they were still black and racist people didn't care. What was Martin Luther King wearing when he was assassinated? Because I can tell you it wasn't a do-rag and Debo slippers. What were the, the protesters wearing when they were getting the dogs lashed out on them and when they were getting the, um, what are those things called? The fire hoses sprayed on them. What were they What were they wearing? Three-piece suits. So the respectability, pro, um, the respectability politics, who is it for? Because at the end of the day, black people can do whatever it is. We can develop our own culture and it's not gonna be taken seriously until a white person appropriates it. Change my mind, please. So while Monique didn't directly, ooh, that's a lot. While Monique didn't directly say, oh, like we have to look good for the white man or blotty this or blotty that. You have to look at why her father told her those things. It had nothing to do with pride. It had nothing to do with pride. Being prideful. Oh, only people who respect themselves get fully dressed up. I'm not saying that if you choose not to wear a bonnet or a scarf outside that you're you're better than everybody else or whatever, but that's your opinion. If you want to wear a bonnet outside, that's that's up to you. Somebody who chooses not to wear a bonnet, that's on them. But just because you choose not to wear a bonnet doesn't mean you're better than people who do. It's giving very much like, oh, you still get a relaxer. Oh, you still get a relaxer. Who are you trying to impress? Maybe a person chooses to get a relaxer because it makes it easier for them to do their hair. Maybe a person chooses to get a relaxer because they prefer their hair straight. Maybe a person chooses to get a relaxer because it's none of your business. Just because somebody chooses to embrace their natural hair, their natural hair doesn't mean anything. It absolutely means nothing. I mean, and we can go into why people felt like they needed to relax their natural hair to begin with. And I'll give you a hint. It was because our natural hair was deemed unkempt. Our natural hair was deemed unprofessional just because it was fluffy 
or kinky or curly. Black people who had natural hair and afros were not getting jobs. That's how our hair became a political statement. It was because white people were not giving black people jobs based on their hair as if their hair has anything to do with how they can do their jobs. So then Monique was talking about how I guess there was a woman who a guy came up to in the grocery store because she was wearing a bonnet, maybe some slippers. And the guy was like, I don't understand how women are so, you know, are always like, oh, men never approach me. But then you come out looking like this. You think a man wants to approach you when you, you know, when you're wearing a bonnet? First of all, who said she wanted to be approached? And secondly, like, why is this conversation never the same with men? Men have the nastiest hygiene and expect women to look top notch at all times, but they ain't wash their ass because wiping their ass is gay. Make it make sense. And no, it's not all men, just like it's not all women. And this reminds me of, this is giving me very much, remember the video I did about The Bachelor when he, you know, he was talking to those white people and he was like, you know, I have to make sure I look my best at all times because I might be the only black person that white person comes in contact with and I want them to know that black people are good. What? If somebody is basing their opinions on a whole race of people based off of one person that they may or may not see that day, that's a them problem. And black people are not a monolith. So I don't understand why black people feel the need to look their best, unless it's like a personal thing. Like me personally, I don't care what other people think of me. If I go out, I ain't got no makeup on, I got on a scarf, you know, I've got on a, a t-shirt and, and some and some jeans, some shorts, whatever, some flip-flops. And that's how I want to go out. That's fine. There's other people who wouldn't be caught dead without makeup. There's other people who will not be caught dead without their hair cut. And actually, I'm kind of one of those people. Right now, I'm broke. I don't have enough money to get my hair cut. So I put on, you know, like a cute little headscarf. So now somebody's going to look down on me. And be like, ugh, how could she wear that scarf in public that's so tacky and ghetto and whatever, whatever it is that people think. She doesn't, she, she doesn't have any pride. She has low self-esteem. What makes you think that? How do you know I'm not just running out real quick? We are all different people. And again, if you think you meet one person, part of a group, and you're like, oh yeah. I don't like them. I don't like them because of this one person. That's a you problem. I'm sorry you feel that way. And like I said, like she did not say white people, but just because the respectability um, politics came from like the 40s, 50s, 60s, it always has been about pleasing the white people. And that's 100% what respectability product politics is. I don't know why I keep saying, want to say products, but it's all about the norm. It's in all marginalized groups. If you take the LGBTQ community, people will literally say, oh, I don't have a problem with gay people just as long as they're not too flamboyant. Like, what? How are you going to gatekeep the way that somebody acts just because you're uncomfortable? If you're uncomfortable, you can remove yourself from the situation. And it's giving very like dress how you want to be addressed. Well, I would love to be addressed respectfully at all times. But you're telling me that me putting a bonnet on my head means I'm deemed less re like less respectful or respected. I don't understand. So you're saying that you would rather respect somebody dressed to the nines, but acting like a douche than somebody who maybe can't afford to wear nice clothing, but they've got an amazing personality is like, I don't like it. I, I don't like it. And, and back to the whole, like, why do older people think that, you know, black people had to step out looking their best, um, 
because it was to appease the white people. And if you don't believe me, literally hairstyles, like protective hairstyles that black people normally wear, box braids, um, locks, things like that, cornrows, those were literally written into laws. White people weren't wearing locks. White people weren't wearing box braids. So it was obviously to oppress further black and brown people. There are literal laws saying that, oh, you can't wear your hair like that. Your hair has to be neat and straight. My hair's not naturally straight. So you're telling me that I have to spend my money to make my hair straight for your approval because my existence makes you uncomfortable. So much so that you had to make it a law. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. And they only do this to women. They only do this to women. They don't, we don't have this discourse about men wearing do-rags in public. And the crazy thing is do-rags are, they're more of like a fashion statement, if anything. Like I know that, you know, do-rags are to help men and women, you know, slick their hair down to get waves or whatever. But like LL Cool J was a whole bald ass man wearing do-rags. But that discourse never happened. It was never like, uh, well, how come men think that they can wear do-rags? How come they don't respect themselves? Because it's not about men. It's about, uh, it's always about trying to make women into ladies or whatever like men aren't seemed or deemed less manly if they don't wear a do-rag but oh but a woman is deemed less feminine or less ladylike if she goes out with a bonnet and I know a lot of people are like bonnets are for the inside and again a lot of people are like that's what that's what I was taught that's what my parents and grandparents taught me. My grandparents could never, would never. You know what? I was raised the same way. My mom would be like, because I used to like, back in the early 2000s, I used to like to wear pajama pants to school. And sweatpants weren't really, really a thing. But I just wanted to be comfortable. I liked wearing sweatpants. And I was a gymnast and we, or pajama pants. I was a gymnast and we always wore pajama pants. Like into the gym. Pajama pants were my thing. And my mom would be like, how come you're wearing your pajamas outside? And I'm like, I mean, it's not like I sleep in them. These are pajama pants that I like. And she's like, well, you, she would tell me the same thing. Don't wear your pajamas outside. Don't wear your pajamas outside. And I'm just like, well, guess what? <laughs> I am like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to say. Because I was comfortable. Why do I have to be uncomfortable for somebody else's comfort? And I'm sorry, if you think that I'm less than because of something you would never do. And I think that's where a lot of, like a lot of um, like mental illnesses and issues come from. Because you're told one thing, like society tells you one thing, but you feel another way and you're like, well, then there must be something wrong with me because, uh, because of my feelings. And nobody ever wants to talk about the unpopular opinions. Nobody ever wants to talk about that. And my, like, and my whole thing is like, why can't people just mind their business? Why are people taking pictures of random people on the internet and going, why are they wearing a bonnet? The only thing that really should be in question when it comes to people is their hygiene. Ooh, I need blush. That's a question that I'm okay with asking. Like, how come you're not washing your feet? Because I feel like hygiene issues can become like medical issues. I think hygiene issues are a little different than why are you wearing or why are you not wearing this, that, and the other. Yep, this is not good. Literally blends into nada. Like why are you not brushing your teeth regularly? Those are conversations that I think are worthy of having. Um, like whatever, I'm probably gonna get a lot of heat for this, but there's like a trend using the yellow filter on TikTok and people are literally showing their bright yellow teeth. 
And I understand that some people are just like not born with the best genetics or whatever, but that to me is weird. And that might be hypocritical. And of course, I'm not talking about people that have medical issues and I'm not talking about people who don't have the means to do certain things. But to be worried about why somebody's wearing a bonnet on their head, to be worried about why somebody is wearing slippers, how do you know those aren't their only slippers? I mean, shoes. How do you know that they lost their job and they literally cannot afford to get their hair done? It's best to mind your business. And I know a lot of the conversations were like, they're in the airport and they look like that. First of all, who wants to sit on an airplane for however long in uncomfortable attire? Because I know when I fly, I wear yoga pants. I wear yoga pants. Um, I'll wear a hat, maybe a beanie. I'll wear something to cover my head. And a lot of the times it's because like, especially like if you have a window seat, you've got your head up against the window or you've got your head like on a pillow or your neck pillow, whatever it is. And you don't wanna mess your hair up. How do you know they're not going straight to a, to like an important interview for a job? You don't know what these people are doing. So leave them alone. And I just didn't like Monique's tone. She was very condescending. She was, she was just like, baby girl, why? Baby girl, baby girl, baby this, baby that. And then she brought up something about like, stop calling people queens if they're not really giving off queen vibes or something like that. I could be exaggerating, but in the comments, you guys, everybody was agreeing with her in the comments. And I was just like, am I on crack? Are these not the same people that are telling white people to mind their business? Like we're the only race that does this towards each other. It's giving very, I'm not like those other Negroes. <laughs> What's that girl's name, Treasure? That's what it's giving me. I could never. And I understand if you could never, but that doesn't mean you can shame other people for doing it. The only thing, again, the only thing that I shame people for is like not having good hygiene. So you're telling me you get in the shower, you wash your hair and you just let the rest of the soap trickle down and you think you're clean? Sorry, judging you hard for that sorry but i will teach you how to clean your body a lot of it is just it's a lot like it's woman shaming it's 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 race shaming and i kind of wanted to touch back about the whole about how you know women will be like oh i could never i could never go out with my hair like that and it's giving very like oh i could never go out without my nails painted great that's on you or like if you're gonna wear a mask at least make sure it's got bedazzles on it or so, like it's just so I it just doesn't make any sense to me all right so that is it for this video let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below again like I said I had a whole other respectability politics uh video in store so if you guys really want me to deep dive into it let me know because again to me respectability politics means um it's it's okay, it's okay when like the normal people do it. And by normal, I mean straight white men. That's that's really what I mean. Straight white men, straight white people. Um, if they do it, it's okay. But the minute a marginalized group does it, it's no longer okay. Or it's not okay until a white person does it. So yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. Also, do not forget to link up with me on my social media, especially Twitter. All of that information will be down below in the description box. If you want more of me, make sure you sign up for my Patreon or here um, on my membership on YouTube. Please do not sign up for both because both reap the same benefits. And until my next video, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Give me a, give me a